Amen. First Corinthians chapter six. As Pastor Dean get my mic ready, starting in verse number twelve. Do you have it? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians six twelve. And the word of God says, "You say, <laughs> my God, I am allowed to do anything." This is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. This ain't to unbelievers. This is to us Christians. Mm -hmm. You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. And even though I am allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave, a master to anything. Ooh, that's heavy right there. Verse 13 says, you say fool was made for the stomach and the stomach for fool. This is true, Paul says, though someday God will do away with both of them, food and the stomach. But you, but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. How are you going to justify and say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality? They were made for the Lord, and the Lord occurs about our bodies. Verse 14 says, and God will raise us from the dead by his power. Just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Don't you realize, church, that your bodies, because he's addressing the body, the church. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Boy, this is heavy. I'm going somewhere. Paul says, never. Verse 16 says, and don't you realize, he's questioning the body, that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one. I taught y'all that two weeks ago. With her. You become one with a prostitute. For the scriptures say the two are united into one. So you just ain't having fun and it's over with. It just ain't a one night stand, baby. It ain't like that, my God. Who y'all gotta feel me in the spirit, my God. It says, let me read that again. The two are united into one. So it ain't just no pull up and I holler at you and I'm gone. Something has happened in the spiritual realm when you join with something that's not your wife. But the person who is joined with the Lord is one which one in spirit with him. Then Paul says, okay, this is a cold battle Paul is talking about that's going on inside the church. He says, run from sexual sin. And I'm going to teach you about that. No other sin that so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is sin, is a sin against, uh, against your own body. Verse 19 says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, Christians. Even though the scripture said you can do what you want to do, but everything ain't beneficial that I do what I want to do. You belong to God because if you gave your life to Christ, my God, you no longer, my God, belong to yourself. You was bought with a price if you read your Bible. He owns you. We are a doula, slave unto God. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor. That's why we got to be in covenant. Honor God with your body. You can't pick and choose when you're going to honor God. You know you ain't sin, but then you want to say, God, forgive me, then go back a week later and do it again. You ain't honoring God. And my God, don't get me started. So, Father God, I thank you for the freedom to preach the gospel in spirit and in truth. Father God, help us to restrain ourselves, Father God, from everything that will contaminate our witness and also bring shame on the name of Christ, Father God. Don't let us do anything as a, as a people of God to mock the name of Christ. Oh, my God, let us uphold this bloodstained banner in the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My God. According to 1 Corinthians 16, I mean 6, 12, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you a little bit. I'm going to want to read something to you on my studies. John MacArthur really helped me understand and brought some clarity to me by God. But before I mention it, I want to talk, I'm going to give you my introduction. Whatever God creates, church, and y'all listen to me, whatever God creates for our benefit, for our benefit and blessing, Satan wants to pervert it and curse it. He does. This is true for soul ties as well. Ungodly soul ties can form inappropriate male on male, female on female, even male and female relationships. Let me say that again. Inappropriate relationships 
can, 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 can form between male and male. Read that over there in the book of Romans, the first chapter, where man will leave the natural desire for a woman and burn with lust for another man. The devil is a lie. And all the woman will leave the natural desire for a man and burn with lust for another woman. That's the mm, works of the flesh. I'm going to keep it on a dollar. My God. So, therefore, uh, 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 a female with female, a male slash female relationship. Through too much, this is how soul ties begin to develop. So you might want to write these down. If you got on, you got your phone, take notes on your phone. If you got paper, write this down. If you want something to write with, raise your hand and the greeters and porters will get you something because you need to come prepared. That's Pastor Ron, I always teach Connection Church. Every time you come on Sunday, bring pen and paper because you need to take notes. Don't just come to listen because you cannot retain everything that's being spoken. My God, God may speak to you from the spirit and he won't want you to write it down. Write it down, write it down. So get in the habit of coming with your body. Bible and, so, and a pen and some paper. Never come in the presence of the Lord without something to take notes in. Paul was in prison, my God, on his way to be crucified. He said, bring me, my God, a pen, some paper, and a jacket so I can write this gospel. Amen. Oh, that's too heavy for him. Bring me, he was in prison. He said, bring me paper, pen, and a jacket to keep warm. I got to keep writing. He didn't ask for nothing, my God, a tiny, but a pen, paper, so he could take notes and hear with the spirit of the Lord. That means he was in position, ready to receive, my God, so God can download into his spirit so he can write. Ah, yeah. oh, my God, he didn't ask for no Zuzus and Wham Whams. He didn't ask for no TV or fan or radio. He didn't ask for no Roman noodles and oatmeal pies. Come on, some of y'all know what that means, but I do, baby. Come on, somebody. He said, give me something to keep writing this gospel. He said, I got food you know not of, Jesus said. My God, Paul said, I'm good, baby. I don't need nothing like that. I need, I, I need to write this gospel. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. And so this is how you begin to form soul ties. And I want to preface something right now. I want you to know something. Soul ties is just not sexual sin, even though we're going to attack that, but I'm going to help you, my God. But I need you to shift your mind because God's going to cut all of us tonight. And, I'm going, and, I, and I don't want to label, but he's going to cut us all tonight. And so if I go over a little bit, that's okay because your deliverance, your children, your legacy is tied to this word tonight. So I'll please pay attention and quit worrying about everything else. What did I just do? I just struck your conscience. I'm trying to bring you in so you can receive and don't allow the enemy to rob you of something that you need that's going to move you to your next purpose. Let's go a little deeper. And so you develop unhealthy soul ties through time. Time. What you're hanging around and who you're hanging around. Time. Time. My God. You, you develop, my God, soul ties through time together. Flirting. Flirting. Or sharing personal struggles with another man or another woman. Even if it's woman to woman. Because see, if it's woman to woman, what happens is you develop an emotional soul tie. And every time something goes on, that's the first thing to come to mind. You want to run to her instead of run to God. See, whatever you feed, that's what you live. Come on, come on. Sir. And whatever voice is the loudest in your life, that's what you navigate to. And so you got to be careful, my God, concerning time and flirting. What you're flirting with? Oh, it ain't going to bother nobody. What you're saying to them in the, in the message on your Facebook? What you're saying to them? My God, who you're listening to, my God, is overseas and wherever else they're at. Come on, somebody. Come on, these dating sites and all of those things. Who you talking to on the other end? Who you talking to on the other end? Come on, so you got to be careful, my God. Some of us can't wait to get out so we can go get on that dating site. Because you feel good to the flesh. And we can justify, well, I ain't having sex with him. I, I don't know him, he don't know me, and I, she don't know You know what I'm saying? We justify all this stuff. But you don't understand, it's contaminating your inside, baby. Yeah. Oh, I'm a teacher tonight. Y'all bear with me, church. I just feel like this was really a Sunday morning. My God. Mm, my God. And so sharing personal struggles. Be careful who you're sharing. That's why we keep men with men, Pastor Ron. You understand that? And women with women. We try to do that. I don't, no men is going to be praying for no women in this church. And ain't no women going to be praying with no man in this church. And ain't no man going to be praying with no man. <laughs> I mean, no one. <laughs> I can. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave you alone. But it's dangerous. Let me slow down and teach. It's dangerous to share personal struggles. It's dangerous to share. Well, who do you share it with? Who do you share your personal struggle with? You got to make sure somebody that can handle what you're sharing with them. As I teach my leaders, accountability never goes down. It always go up. You better pay attention because there's a lot of revelation inside the spirit. Some of us is talking to people who can't handle what we're saying to them. You're talking down and should, you be, should be talking up, baby. Everybody can't handle what you got going on in your life. 
You trying to hold on to the familiars. I talked to her this past Sunday. You trying to stay this familiar. And you think, because that's my girl. We went to school together. And we do all this together. But she might not be spiritual enough. And so you could tell me somebody. You ruining somebody. My God, when you should be talking to somebody more spiritual. But you run to somebody on the outside. Because you don't want nobody to know your business on the inside. And so you go contaminate and drop all this heavy load on this friend of yours. Who ain't even spiritually ready to handle what you giving her. So you weighing her down in the natural, my God, and don't even realize it. You affecting him in the natural and don't even realize it. He can't handle, she can't handle, my God. But so therefore, you want you want outside of the church instead of run in the church. Well, the people in the church are just as messy as those in the outside. True that, that's why I got to pray for discernment. That's why I got to say, God, lead me by the Spirit. The Bible says be led by the Spirit. You got to ask God to lead you by the Spirit. You just don't go to anybody because they jumping and shouting and running around. That don't mean nothing. A whole lot of external, my God, don't mean that a person is going hard for God internal. I teach y'all that. I teach y'all right. A whole lot of emotional limbs don't mean nobody's Spirit-led, baby. A whole lot of excitement and screaming and shouting don't mean nobody's spending time with God. My God, emotion, I was just telling Pastor Jeff then before I came into prayer, emotionalism will cost you your soul, baby. Mm. Whole lot of hype. I was talking to my daughter April today, my God, everybody talking about it, lit. This church was lit. I understand the young generation is lit, my God, and it turned up. Okay, after you be turned up, are you built on a firm foundation? After you get through jumping and shouting, are you built to last when the devil comes? Oh, my God, do you got some anchor in your soul, my God, when life come up against you, my baby? My, come on, somebody, when you ain't got no music, when it ain't excited, my God, are you anchored in God? Is your mind set in the things of God? Everything lit. Everybody running to excitement. But nobody want to be built. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And so therefore you can gather, you, 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 can, you, can, you can develop unhealthy soul ties, my God, at work, right there down, and even at church. I'm going to teach you right. Or in other places that people interact. One of the deepest soul ties we can form comes through sexual union. It involves the body, soul, and the spirit. The triune being. Body, soul, and spirit. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. This is a cold butter demon that the church is dealing with. And so most sexual involvement outside of marriage will form an ungodly soul tie. Most, my God, sexual environment outside of covenant. I'm going to take the word marriage and put covenant. Because when you marry, you marry in covenant. See, I'm trying to say this is more than just a ring, baby. This is symbolizer of covenant for better or for worse through sickness and in health. That's why you got to be careful who you laying up with, who you who you consider being your husband or being your wife. My God, come on, somebody, because when it get tight, you just don't run and leave. When he can't pay the bills no more, you just don't decide that I'm done. Come on, somebody. When it ain't mm, no more, I just can't leave and go try to get somewhere else. Come on, somebody. I want my babies, and I told them to be off there because I'm going to teach them too. Yeah, this is covenant. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Soul ties can potentially destroy marriages, family, friendships, and individual lives. Soul ties, flirting with people that's not your husband and wife. Sharing your personal struggles with somebody else more than you are with your significant other. Come on. Spending too much time talking to somebody other than your significant other. My God, that's how and what I mean by it can destroy because for you know it, my God, you sit at the table, you think about her or him instead of your wife. When you think, when you have problems, you want to run it in before you run to your own husband or wife. You got to begin to shift and adjust and adapt if you're doing that. I had to. Boy, Pastor, you just keep it on the dollar, Barry. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. So point number one. Let's look at some characteristics of the ungodly soul tie. But before I read that, I want to read something that I got from John MacArthur. It said the Corinthians had done with their, with, they have done just that with their freedom. Just what Paul had warned the Galatians not to do. And you can write down Galatians 5 and 1, write that down, and also 5.13. He warned them not to use their freedom that God had given them is what he's talking about, to indulge in sexual sin. So in, the, so in this section, Paul exposes the error in the Corinthian church and also Christians. Rationalizing, the Christians begin to rationalize that they were free to sin, y'all, because it was covered by God's grace. 
And the church is thinking like that. People think that because I'm in God, under God's grace that I can do all this because God going to forgive me. Yes, God will forgive you, boy, but you better realize that there is consequences for habitual choosing to sin. Oh, my God, delay do not mean deny. We hear that, my God, but that needs to become, my God, embedded into our belief system. The Corinthian church, my God, was free because they was up under grace, but they felt like they can do what they want to do. Paul had to come in and correct that. Paul was the father of the Corinthian church. He had to come in and correct that belief system. And some of us think that it's okay. Right now, yeah. in the body of Christ everywhere, y'all got to realize what I'm talking about church. I'm not talking about just going off of Christ church. You got people that has convinced themselves, Sister Jackie, that it's okay. For me to live with a man and a woman, and it's okay. It's okay for me to be sleeping with people, my God, that's not my wife or not my husband. It's okay for me to be in this type of relationship that God does not ordain. Right. Male on male or female on female. I'm going to keep it on a dollar at this church. Yeah. Yeah. And we have convinced ourselves, just like the Corinthians, that they have rationalized and said, God going to forgive me. And we justify. That's unhealthy, and it's not biblical. I'm going to preach it, my God. I'm going to preach it, my God. Oh, they felt like it was because they was up under God's grace that it was okay. Sin, write this down, always produces loss. Sin always produces loss. And loss means power. When sin is dominating our lives, we become powerless. And I'm not just talking about sexual sin. When it's any type of sin that we, will, that we, have, we can't stop doing, it, we become powerless to it. Anything that we cannot, church, stop doing. Anything that we cannot, church, stop doing. Anything that we cannot stop doing. Let me say cannot because you can do all things. Jesus Christ. Anything that we won't stop doing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Anything that we won't stop doing, we become master. We become a slave to the very thing we won't stop doing. Because you can stop doing it, but you got to make a choice to stop doing it. Because he's always giving you the victory. You've already been justified. You've already been sanctified because of Calvary, my God. Greater is he. We quote it than he that's in the world. So you just got to choose to stop doing it. And quit trying to justify that it's okay because it ain't okay. If it don't line up with Genesis through Revelation, it's out of order. I don't care what the world saying. I don't care who talking about my church is lit. I don't care how excited some what. What does the word say? Yeah. Yeah. This church is built on a firm foundation, which is Genesis through Revelation. I would not deviate. Yes, so therefore, if we are dumb, we ain't got no power. And that's why I don't know nobody, that's why we can't influence nobody. Don't you know power is not in volume? Power is not in volume. Powers and influence. Yeah. My God, sin, my God, in, interferes with your influence. Amen. You have no influence. People sin is one way in church, my God, and no way at all. Come on, even with our children. Got me helped out over here, parents. Everybody look this way. If you got a child or a grandchild over here, they see what you are in church and they see what you ain't at home. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh, that cut right there, babe. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they see. They see, they see, they see, yeah. And a lot of what makes you mad about them, guess where they learned it from? The apple don't fall too far from the tree. The attitudes they get, look where they're getting it from. The way they dress, look who they learned it from. Help me, Jesus. Seeing has the power, my God, seeing has power. The word means master. Seeing master. And, and no sin is more enslaving, church, and I'm going to move, enslaving than sexual sin. No sin, no sin is more enslaving than sexual sin. It saps, my God, a Christian's joy, peace, and youthfulness. When I see people that was one active, activated in the ministry, all of a sudden they're dropping out everything. You know what I'm trying to say? I need to just sit down. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay, why you need to sit down? I'm tired. It takes more than that because like I taught my leaders on Monday, J Jesus had an assignment. I taught him Monday. Jesus' assignment, watch this, Barry. Look up here. Jesus' assignment kept him on the cross. Guess what his assignment was? Everything that's sitting up in there and everything in the world. See, when you have an assignment, you don't get to quit on God. When you've been called, my God, to a certain ministry, you don't get to quit on God. Can you sit down and get healed a little bit? Yes, I understand that, my God. But the assignment will keep you going. When people walk out to church, I got to keep going. When people get mad, I got to keep going. When, my God, when people turn their back on me, I got to keep going. Why? Because my assignment, very demands that I continue on. God didn't call me to stop because if the church store, people start leaving the church. Pastor Ron, God didn't call you to stop because if somebody started disliking you, if that brother turns his back on you, your assignment got to keep going, baby. I can't get nobody. If Pastor Chapter decided to leave the church, guess what? 
Lord, this pastor is going on to see what they end up a saved life. I'm be like, you better ask somebody. Your assignment will keep you on the cross. Your assignment will keep you going home for Christ. Your assignment will keep you loving. Your assignment will say, I ain't got time to be bitter. I ain't got time to walk in unforgiveness. I got an assignment on my life. Oh my God, yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's why you can't serve God out of contract. You got to serve God out of covenant. Christ was in covenant. My God, his covenant demand that he stay on the cross. Oh, my God, I feel good. So point number one is look at these ungodly soul ties. A curl for examination of all our relationships. A curl for examination. I was in prayer this evening talking about that to myself, to God. A curl for examination of all our relationships will reveal godly or ungodly soul ties. Because there is godly soul ties like I taught you two weeks ago. Go online and look at it. We must ask ourselves, does the relationship, does this relationship that I'm in glorify God? You have to do a careful examination. Paul said, examine yourself daily to see that you be in the faith. Don't you know you can deviate and drift? Yes, Don't you know you can start out in faith yes, sir. and drift away from faith and find yourself caught up into something that if you'd have kept your faith anchored, you would have never ended up over here? And then when you try to bring yourself back, if you don't stay focused and stay determined, my God, you can find yourself drifting to the other side. See, you're trying to say people are being blown around by every wind and doctrine. Everything, my God, is rallying the people. I was telling Pastor Jeff, we was talking, my God, today, me, Pastor Jeff, and Pastor Mark, and Minister Jeremy, my God said people don't love communion. Communion means fellowship. They don't, I mean community, community. They don't love community. People don't value the house of the Lord. But see, I told Pastor Jeff this, this afternoon, I said, even if going over Christ never get to a thousand people, long as they develop spiritually, I take development spiritually any day over numbers. Many pastors and people are looking at numbers, but they don't care about the spiritual development. My God, oh, I want you healthy. I want you whole. I want you free. My God, I'll take that any day over four, five hundred people here that's unhealthy. Give me a church, my God, of people that's pushing, a church that people are thriving, people that's getting healed, people are getting free. I take it any day, my sister Melody, any day over a whole bunch of people who don't want nothing but to be entertained. Who he preached with passion? Because I love God. Thank you, Jesus. We gotta ask ourselves: Does relationship bring glory to God? Think about your relationship. If you're writing, you ought to be writing down some of these names of the people that you call. And you talk to, if you talk to him more than three or four times a week, you better be evaluating that relationship. If it's any man or woman that you talk to three or four times a week or three or four times a day, you need to be evaluating that right now. Yes, Lord. We got to ask ourselves, does this relationship glorify God? Is it bringing me closer to Jesus? Just because we have a relationship also with another Christian doesn't mean that we have a godly soul time. You can, just because he or she is a Christian don't mean that you have a godly soul time. That's why I be trying to, I done seen it, I done seen it, thank you, Holy Ghost, but I done seen too many of my daughters since I burnt going over Christ Church get picked off behind a python that came in talking about this, and I go to church, I love God, I read my Bible, but they never come to church with them. See what I'm trying to say? Anything you keep flirting with, anything you keep listening to, every time he or she calls, you answer the phone, see what I'm trying to say? He's getting stronger, stronger, and stronger. She getting stronger and stronger. And stronger. Many, y'all hear me say this, and I say this with pain in my spirit. I'm grieving when I make this statement because it's the truth. I've seen many good women going hard for Christ get picked off from this church right here because of a man. So I want you to think about this right here. Do you feel you are compromising? This is how you evaluate the characteristics of an ungodly soul tie. Do you feel you are compromising or being compromised in ways that go against your conscience or the word of God? Is she or he asking you to do something that you know the word of God tells you that you shouldn't do? Is it Kamari or she asking you to do something? Is anybody a tiny asking you to do something that you know that if somebody found out, you would get in trouble. This is how faith you engage. If somebody is attempted or you are attempted to do anything that you know that if your mama found out or anybody in the ministry found out, it would bring shame on you. If you could say, ah, uh, yeah, then you shouldn't do it. Amen. 
So as I looked at my babies, how about you? The Bible says what's done in the dark going to come to the light. See what I'm trying to say? Y'all know my Mary J. Blige not. You got away with it, but nine months she kept it secret. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can avoid that sin as long as that baby's being formed. But sooner or later, it got to come out. See what I'm trying to say? Your sins will find you out. Read the book of 2 Timothy, or 1 Timothy. The Bible says some of our sins follow. They trail behind us, and eventually they catch up and bring judgment. They follow us. Our sins will follow us. Come on, Pastor, let's get a demonstration. Come on, Pastor, let's get a demonstration. Some of us got to understand our sins is just like this. They not right up on me, the sins, because I'm getting away with it, and I ain't got in trouble yet. Ain't nobody found out yet. I've been driving from here to Coweta, so don't nobody know her. I got a duck thought. You know, she cool. She ain't, on, she ain't really tripping. You know what I'm trying to say? I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm just talking to him on the Internet. You know, he ain't, he ain't never saw my face. I ain't never been over there. You know, he really don't know what I look like. So, you know, he's just a friend. Follow me. My sins is following me. Eventually, they get right up on you. That's exposure. God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God's grace, church, let me teach you right. God's grace cover you. God's grace and mercy gives you and I an opportunity to change and fix what we need to fix, Minister Jackie. And if you don't do it, exposure. If you don't do it, judgment is coming. Now you embarrassed. See, God will hide you down here, but then when you try to hit this platform up here, what you didn't kill down there, now you up before the people like I am. Now what you didn't take her down there, now God got exposure. So that, my God, that we're doing, God's grace is covering you and I. Eventually, he's going to say, okay, enough is enough. And then, bam, exposure. And you can't blame nobody. Somebody in the church may call it out. How you going to judge me? Now God just used that person to the son that messed you in. They called it out. And now you bitter. Now you want to leave the church. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. You've been found out. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish I was on a Sunday morning. I got time to teach the gospel. So, again, do you feel like you're compromising or being compromised in ways that go against your conscience? My God, my God, you know what's right and wrong. You don't need no pastor or nobody to tell you what's right and wrong. God built a, a right and wrong conscience inside of you. This is Bible study, baby. We preach the gospel at going off of Christ church. You got it already in you. Everybody in there know right from wrong. Every one of these babies over here know right from wrong. Look at this right here. Is this relationship one-sided or self-centered? Self-centered means it's all about one person. You got to evaluate the relationships that you're in. Is he making it all about him? Is she making it everything about her? One-sided. Let me go a little quicker. Is there a mutual sharing? Write this down. Sharing. Growth. And freedom. Is there a mutual sharing, growth, and freedom? Or is there bondage, control, and manipulation? Sharing, growth, and freedom. That's the, benefit, that's the healthy side. Of a relationship. Or is there bondage. Control. My God. And manipulation. I see many of them. My God was running hard. Why you got to go to church? Dang you at church on Wednesday Sunday. It, it don't take all that. God know your heart girl. And so you so emotionally tired and trying to please him when well, you will self-sabotage and you will listen to his voice or her voice before you obey God's voice. You know good and well you need to be in the house of the Lord. You know you was going. You know you was prospering because you want somebody because you're tired of being alone. And so you let him manipulate you and disconnect you from the vine, disconnect you from your brotherhood, disconnect you from your sisterhood, cause you to start missing your P12 group because you want to hang out with him. You spend too much time at church. You go to church on Sunday. You got class at 11. Then you got Bible study study on Wednesday, and then you got a P12 group. When are you going to make some time for me? You know what? You need to tell them, why come you ain't in church in your P12? Why come you ain't in church? Don't get me started. But you ain't strong enough to say that because you're weak. You'll let, him, you'll let him manipulate you. You'll let her manipulate you and talk you out of what you know you're supposed to be doing, but you won't put a demand on him. You'll let him, the demon, put a demand on you, but you won't put a demand on him unhealthy soul tie. Oh, he gonna talk you up out of church and you can't talk him in church. Run! Yes. He gonna talk you out of church but you can't talk him in the church. Yes. Wow. Somebody give God a hand. Yes. <laughs> oh, is they checked in, friend, friend, because we in there. Yeah. 
my God. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Does this relationship move you towards God or away from God? I know you're growing up with him or her. I know that's your friend. Does it move you towards God or away from God? Does it move you towards God? Are you letting the voice, my God, cause you to solely but solely be plucked out of, even though the Bible says you can't be plucked out of God's hand, are you solely but solely disconnecting from the vine? John 15, 1 through 5, I'm the vine, you are the branch. Are you allowing, my God, manipulation? Are you allowing, my God, what did I say, manipulate control and bondage to, to sever you? Picture a saw when you're trying to cut a tree or cut a branch off. You know what I'm saying? This is what the enemy doing. Look at me, y'all. Everybody look at me. My God, he got a saw. My God, and he's manipulating you. My God, he got, he got control over you. My, oh, my God. His voice means more to you than God's. And so, therefore, he's sawing. He's sawing. Sawing you away from Jesus. Sawing you away from the vine. Sawing you away from the, my God, the man that you first fell in love with, come at Christ. Sawing you away through manipulation and bondage. Come on, church. I'm talking to the right crowd. My God, when self-centeredness is the core of a relationship, y'all, remember, self-centeredness is the core. Don't you know you can be married and start off in God, start off right, and we can, I done done it before, become very self-centered, make everything about you. I'm talking to the married couples, too. This ain't just for unsaved people. If we don't protect our marriage covered in my God, it can become contaminated. Hmm. And so, therefore, if the marriage, my God, is all, if, if he's making it all about him, wives, then you say, we need to talk. My God, then you say, okay, yeah, I know it's all about you. You make everything about you, point out my faults, but I can't say nothing to you. You get mad. See what y'all say? It's time for some counseling. It's time to set up a meeting. If he say he don't want to go to meeting, then that go to the red flag right there, baby. If she don't want to go to the meeting, that go to the red flag right there, baby. I don't want to talk to them. They're going to side with you because you've been at the church longer. The devil is alive. It's down the middle. Let every man be alive. God be the truth up in this church, baby. Yeah, we become self-centered in our marriages. J and A, keep it, my God, about each other. Never let it get contaminated. Never let your relationship be all about you. Never let a man or a woman dominate you, my God, and tell you what you can and you can't do. You can take care of my kids, but you can't take care of your kids. The devil is a lie. Yeah, we got some women with that type of spirit in the church. They intimidated, my God, don't want you to take care of your own biological kids because they worry about what you're going to say to the... Come on, Pastor. Ooh, you right up in there. Tell me if that's God. Remember, I'm dealing with Christians. How you going to tell me you're a man or a woman of God and you won't let your husband now, who in love with you, my God, America, you take care of his own kids? And you talking about you a Christian and you love God because you can't stand her. And so therefore, your word, your thing is to keep him away from his kids. That keeps him away from her. You hurt those kids. Shame on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking to everybody. All, every war. I ain't talking about going over for Christ's church. And you got many people sitting in churches walking on staff. My God is hateful like that. That's an unhealthy soul type. They married and that's unhealthy. And he's so weak, he let her do it. Because he need a place to stay and a car to drive. Get your own car. Boy, you better ask somebody. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When self-centered is at the core of the relationship, the soul tie can lead to a form of manipulation. When self-centeredness, church, is the core of the relationship, the soul tie can lead to a form of manipulation. Well, let me drive your car. I'm going to go look for a job. So you pick, and then you get off of work at 5, he don't get there to 6.30, but he in your car. Let me help you. Because the minds of two people, let's here we go, church. We've been dealing with a mission greeting about the importance of the belief system. Yeah. My God, the healthy heart, not this, but the mind. Yeah. Because two minds, because the minds of two people are open to one another. See what I'm trying to say? That's where, the, that's where the enemy gets in. That's all with manipulation in. Because I want to please him and he wants to please me. And so my mind is open to whatever she or he got to say. But you got to be careful and make sure you're not being manipulated. Yeah. Yeah. 
And if you've been wounded from a child and you struggle with self-esteem issues, and if you've been wounded, my God, as a child, male or female, and you deal with the spirit of rejection, and so therefore you would submit to everything she or he got to say because you don't want to deal with rejection. But yet there's things in this church, my God, and classes for you to take that you, some of y'all have been through, but you still struggle with rejection. And so that means you ain't free. Sign your butt up and get back to class because you ain't free. Ooh, pastor, you shouldn't talk like that. The devil is a lie. I want you free. Give God a hand. That's how we do it at Going Home for Christ Church, baby. Mm. My God, you got to understand the enemy will get in. He has legal access to wreak havoc in any relationship where well, there's manipulation and bondage, my God, and control and domination. That's, 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 that's a breeding pot. Bless the woman of God. Get some water right there, son. That's a breeding pot. That's a breeding pot for the enemy. Wherever there's confusion, wherever there's manipulation, and are you listening to me, Brian? Wherever there's control in our tiny and all that, that's a, that's a melting pot, my God, for nothing but the enemy. Whenever the woman is telling the man to do everything, he ain't got no self-esteem, no self-confidence. Well, it ain't the woman's fault. It's your fault. Man up. That's why many of them don't follow me because it, it, it takes a real man to walk with a real man. I'm a real man as real as a sister you can get, baby. I'm keeping it on the dollar. Some men can't handle a strong man with a strong personality that's trying to help them become a real man. Because they weak. Sorry. But I want to help them, but you got to come closer to get healthy. You can't quit at the first sign of, of opposition. I said it. If your woman is always telling you what to do, man, that's a problem. If she don't respect your manhood, that is manipulation and bondage. Point number two, let's go a little deeper. She can't la 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 boshanda. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every yoke, Lord. Cut it away. Sever it. Every unhealthy soul tie. Let's look at breaking. I gave you some characteristics. Let's talk about breaking. Let me read this for, to you first. Again, from John MacArthur. Paul affirms that all sex outside of marriage is sin. All. If you're not married, you ain't said, I do. She or he ain't got your name. And you are living or, or, or having sex. You are in S-I-N. And God's grace and mercy is covering you, but get it right. You know, if you ain't got no money for no wedding, let's get some counseling. And I didn't marry four or five people in my office. Yeah. Yeah. Because it ain't about the marriage. It's about the sanctification of the marriage. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm If you can't afford no wedding, we can go right off in there and I'll get you married. If God tell me to, because I don't just marry nobody because they want to be married. I didn't turn them down. I made my son and pushed hers about six months because I told him you wasn't ready. I just don't marry people for don't call me because I'm going to check you and make sure you're straight. And I'm going to ask you to move out before I move out to get some time away from her for a minute before I say, come on, because marriage, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, y'all think, think I'm tripping. Let me go with you. Let me go. The Bible says God, my God, likens the church as the bride. He's married to the church. My God, wed, my God, my God, marriage is the highest, it's one of the highest institutions in the covenant of God. He's married to the church. That's why he said I'm married to the backslider. You know what I'm saying? God likens marriage to the church. My God. He said he died for the church. This is Bible, church. I'm just giving it to you real. It's unhealthy. Although ungodly soul, soul ties are sinful, Jesus forgives all sin. Let me give you this. And so if you have a marriage outside, my, I mean, a, a sex outside of marriage, it's illicit, it's uh, a sin, but illicit relationships. But illicit relationships, church, by believers are especially reprehensible. Illicit relationships by believers, Christians, are especially reprehensible. Rest, rest, rest prehensible. Amen. Because, I got to slow down, because they profane Jesus with whom we are one. So whenever you have sex with a woman that's not your wife or a man that's not your wife, you are joining Christ to that. Because you can't say Jesus comes in. The Spirit of God lives on the inside. So wherever you go, he go. That's why it says, grieve not my spirit. That's why it says, touch no unclean thing. Be ye separate. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You become one when any person is not your wife. 
Let me say anything. That's not your husband or not your wife. I forgot to give y'all the title, but the title was Breaking Loose. It's time to break loose. Let me get off of this. We must break unhealthy soul ties that we have made with other people, regardless of, uh, regardless of how they were formed. Regardless. However they were formed, we have to make up our mind tonight to break them. Breaking these is like a mother. Watch this. Breaking these is like a mother who, after giving birth to her child, allows the umbilical cord that ties the two together to be cut. Y'all listen to me. When this happens, the baby can start a new life and begin to grow on its own. In the same way, we must cut and sever ungodly soul ties so we can move on with our lives. Breaking ungodly soul ties requires three important steps. And before I give them to you, my God, until you cut that cord. Come here, Pastor. Until you cut that cord. Get behind me. Pull on this RL. When you cut the cord, first let it go, Pastor. When a mother cut the cord, the baby can start the process of development, growth, progress, maturity, and so forth. If you and I choose not, come on, Pastor, choose not to cut the cord tonight, I'm not going to ever be able to make real progress. I'm not going to be able to grow. Now pull back, Pastor, go back. Because every time I try to move forward, that soul tie is pulling me back. Every time I try to get away from him and I try to move forward, every time I tell God, yes, I'm serious this time, I nailed him to the cross, I nailed that to the cross, you may do that, but then he... Because let me help you. Because anything that you do external, if you don't shift your mind internal, you're going to go right back to it. It's called paradigm shift. See, I had a paradigm shift April the 30th of 1995. Game banging was no longer my thing. Selling dope and smoking dope was no longer my thing. Being a criminal, trying to live up to somebody that I wasn't, a God shifted my mind. And that's why I never went back to it in 23, four years, period, to none of that mess, because I had a paradigm shift. I could talk about this stuff all night. You could say, ooh, pastor, that was good. But if you don't shift your mind, guess what? He going to pull you, and she going to pull you right back in. To something that you know you need to be out of. Well, I can't make it without him. I need his $300. Why gain the world but lose your? Get out your house and move in with your girlfriend until you're able to start, get your own place. How bad do you want to be free? Quit justifying that God know your heart. God's grace is covering you, but remember judgment. I'm pointing my finger. I am. I'm pointing. Do God loves us? He loves every last one of us. The Bible said while you and I was yet in sin, Christ came and died. When I was a mess, my God, Christ died for me. My God, he knew that we all was going to make mistakes. He's not that we give our life to Christ, my God. But sooner or later, the Bible says develop and grow up into the things of God. Sooner or later, you got to break loose from that stuff, my God. Sooner or later, you got to make your mind up and have a paradigm shift that is no longer going to be mastered by nothing but the Holy Spirit. Sooner or later, you got to make that type of mindset. Yes. And when you begin to break loose, people are going to start lying on you, talking about you, hating you. And some of those same men and some of the same women say, you be back. I know you're going to church. I know you're over there with Pastor Juju. I know you're supposed to be going hard oh, for Christ. You'll be back. And some of y'all, my God, y'all make them truthful because you go back. Yeah. You go back. And you know what you do when you do that? You mock God and you mock your life. And the Bible says that what a man so. Yeah, you mock God. When you and I come up in the time that you're going off of Christ, and three months later, my God, you right back in that mess, you just mock God. Yeah. Can a man really mock God? You can make God look bad, Christians. Yes. We can, not you, we can yes. make God look bad yes. because we was running a good race. Paul said to the Galatian church, what happened? Now you back entangled up under the law. Now you back involved in the stuff that you was once free from. When you get free from something, you go back into it, you just mocked your life. Yeah. And you wonder why people keep bringing up your past. As I teach y'all, don't live your past and people won't bring up your past. Yeah. 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 Give God a hand going off for Christ. 
So Pastor, he sure been preaching. My God, Pastor, you don't help me, Pastor. Pastor, how are you keeping it on the dollar? But will you help me? I want to get free. I'm glad you asked because I'm going to help you. Because see, one thing about it, I'm learning. My God, Pastor Tamir Bennett said, if you got the power to turn me down, you better have the power to pick me back up. I'm going to pick you up, but you still got to have a paradigm shift. I'm going to give you these points, but if you don't do nothing with it, that's on you. It ain't on the church. All I did expose the enemy, bought some knowledge to some things that you may think was okay. Everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial, baby. Yes, yes. Is the relationship lopsided? Is it holding you back? Is it holding you back, Bree? Is it holding you back, Camille? Is it holding you back, Barry? Is it holding you back? Because you know we can get unhealthy in our marriages. All of a sudden now it's all about what you do. But what about what you do? It takes both. It takes two people to survive today. Unless you make it three, four hundred thousand dollars, it takes both incomes to survive at this day and time. If not, quit spending. Yeah. Ooh, somebody give God a hand. <laughs> I ain't trying to get nobody in trouble. Don't blame it on pastor. I promise you don't blame it on pastor. So how do I get free? How do I get free? Write down point, I mean, number one, prayer. Everything starts with going vertical. Everything. Everything, everything starts with being vertical. In our personal time with God, we need to be asking him to show us ungodly relationships we are involved in. We then must ask his forgiveness. See, you can't say, God, okay, I see it, but don't ask God to forgive you. We need to ask God for his forgiveness in our involvement. Don't blame him or don't blame her. You made the choice. If he didn't make you do, if he ain't making you be with him, if he ain't putting no, well, take that back. Holy Ghost, thank you, God. If you are being forced against your will to be in a relationship, you better be looking for an exit because sooner or later, it could be your life. Yes, yes, yes. And notice, as I'm talking to the church, I'm talking to everybody that's looking on social media, too. Because yes. there's people watching me right now that's in, that's, that's in a relationship against their will, and they're scared to leave because he didn't threaten them. And he told them, if you leave, I'm going to kill you and the kids. And so that's bondage. And you got people in church sitting just like that in bondage, fearful. The only time I told y'all they free is when they come to church. When they leave out them door, they terrified. Christians. God has delivered some of them out of relationship, but eventually he went and she went back. She ain't got nobody to blame. He ain't got nobody to blame but herself. God set you free. What you go back for? Mm, mm, mm. Break and renounce. You got through prayer. You got to, when God revealed to us, we got to break and renounce the soul tie. Mm, that's form. And then cover it in the blood. You got to speak. The Bible said, confess and believe. My God, and you shall be saved. But you got to speak to the soul tie. Sometimes you got to call that person's name. And say, I renounce this soul tie. I told you, you got to pull your soul in. Some of y'all, my God, that I know wants to be married, to get ready to get married. Before you get married, listen to me as I admonish you and encourage you and exhort you. Call your soul in before you marry somebody. What you mean, call your soul in? That means everybody that you have a soul tie with, every man, my God, that you done slept with, you need to call their name if you can remember and say, I'll renounce, I'll re-break, and I'll plead the blood. Forgive me for every sin, for every person I done slept with, everything I, everybody I done flirted with, everybody I done allowed to do stuff to me, my God, I call my soul back in in the name of Jesus. And then, my God, make sure you are healthy before you say, I do. If you still struggle and every now and then he pop up, she pop up in your mind, you are not ready to be married. Amen. Amen. That's, right. That's, good, That's why we still struggle with adultery. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. 18 years giving God glory, have never committed it. Yes. Not casting no stones, none of that. But you got to call your soul in. You got to get healthy before you move from one relationship to another. Some of us is bouncing around just like the children of Israel. We all over the place. Yeah. Get healthy. Sit still. Yes, sir. The Bible says when they circumcised the children of Israel, they were circumcised. I know I'm talking about because these babies, but they sat in the camp until they healed. Yeah. A lot of us not even healed. We're trying to get in another relationship. We just broke up two weeks ago, and now we have found somebody else trying to be in another relationship. That's why they ain't going right because you ain't healthy. That's why it's hell because you ain't healthy. Yeah. And then you want to blame the church when the church try to help you get free. Oh, my God, somebody give God a hand in the church. Oh, I feel like preaching, baby. Renounce, renounce, call it out. 
Get a proxy session. What is a proxy? Come stand right here, son. This is a proxy session. Do it with your wife. I find your accountability part in your 12. Matter of fact, P12 leaders, allow your daughters and allow your sons to have a proxy session. My fact, this week, my God, when you have your 12 meetings, my God, proxy session. You know what I'm saying? So they can stand up there and call that mess out. And so you got to speak her name, whoever her name is. I renounce this name. I can't remember because I've been with mine since I was 17, so I don't know. Somebody, whoever she is, call it out. I renounce you. I renounce that. What? Well, Cindy or uh, 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 Joanne or uh, uh, Susan, whoever. You got to speak it out. And then you got to ask somebody, about her, let this person be Susan. Let this person be Diane. Let this person be whoever. Let it be that person. Speak to it. You got to get serious about this stuff. This stuff is killing y'all. And it's killing the church. This ain't no game. This is not no game. This is real serious. Shut your sin is a devil. You got to get serious with that. You got, how bad do you want it, baby? And if you really want to get free, go to your wife and say, I need to renounce this. Then let her be it. Yes. That builds intimacy. Yes. Confess it to her. Confess it to him. Yes. 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 Oh, my God. It is too real in this church, baby. Yeah. I felt that in my soul. Go ahead, son. Yes, ma'am. Number two. After prayer, this is how you get free. You got to make a willful decision. Time is at hand, but I'm going to finish this. If you got to leave, do so quietly. My God, willful decision. Willful decision. The Bible says out of the soul, it's the mind, the will, and emotion. Don't you know you and I serve God from our will and from our mind? The Bible says it's with the mind. Now I that you and I serve God. So if your mind is unhealthy, guess what your life going to be? Guess what your relationship going to be like? If you're not healthy in your emotions, you get dealing with all this low self-esteem, lack of confidence, and all of those type of stuff. Guess what, my God? Rejection? You're going to feel like the Holy God going to reject you. You're going to feel like, the, my God, if you don't love yourself, you're going you're gonna to be like, God don't love me. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody love me. I've been mistreated all my life. Men and women have been all my life. See, that's your mindset. You're wounded. You're a broken citron, baby. You need to be put back together. You need to get back on the altar. Let God put you on the altar. You ain't ready for no relationship. If you still got to have affirmation from a man to feel good about yourself, you got to be able to encourage your own self. You got to be able to stand on your own feet. You got to build your life on your own foundation through Christ. Yeah. Some of us can't move unless we got a man behind us. Mm. Though the act of the will, come on, let's get this. Though the act, through the act of the will, through the act of our will, we then mentally, mentally choose to lead the ungodly relationship. This is often the hardest part. There must be an agreement within our will. My God, Lanny taught that this Sunday and last Sunday missing the greeting. You gotta, I told y'all that we got to bring our soul, mind, will, and emotion under submission to our spirit. If your soul is on top of your spirit, you're out of order and you're in trouble. Anytime your mind and your will tells you what you can do and what you can't do and you never submit to your spirit, you are doomed. And you are a victim, my God, to brokenness. When your mind and your will always disqualifying you. When you tell yourself, I can't live without him. I can't live without her. I got to look at this porn. I got to do all this type of stuff. You are defeated. Christian, I don't care how much tongues you speak in. You got to bring your soul into alignment with your spirit. Your spirit dominates your soul. You get your soul, my God, submitted to your spirit, and God will begin to heal your mind, will, and emotions. You can't serve God, my God, out of the flesh. The soul is the flesh. That's why you make progress, then you quit. That's why you get, you get encouraged, you come to church faithfully, then you quit coming. Your soul is leading your life. And so if your soul is leading your life and making all your decisions, guess what? Anytime, my God, you need some excitement fleshly, that's what you're going to go to. Because your soul is leading. Your soul is feeding on all the worldly stuff. Yeah. You don't never think about getting excited through listening to the word. Yeah. I listen to some gospel music. I come into fellowship. I get pumped up when I'm around the brothers and the sisters. I get charged up when I'm around the saints of God. I ain't got to go to no club and be around a bunch of hooligans, my God. To feel, my God, you better ask somebody. Some of us is dead as a doorknob. You got to go to the flesh to feel good. You better get saved for real. Oh, my God. Somebody give God a hand. 
He preached too hard because I want your butt free. That's right. Got to be in agreement. Or you will not leave the other person if you don't get your will in agreement with your decision. Will, mind, will, and emotion, soul. If you got, you know some people right now that you got to cut and sever ties with, you can think about them and you can tell yourself, you can even write them down. But if your will ain't ready, you ain't going to do it. And this does not mean marriages. I need to preface that. You don't have, I'm not telling you to go and divorce your husband or your wife. That's not what I'm saying. So you got to have a willful decision. A willful decision. Lord, bring my will. Most people lose the battle, Pastor, in their soulish man. If the soul never get in line with the spirit, Jackie, they will never win. You will always be dominated. Are you listening to me, son? If you're not flipping the pages, you're not spending time with God, you're not being around the brotherhood, I'm just speaking, you'll never win. All the pain that we got in our lives, my God, all the stuff that we need God to do, if you don't get around the body of Christ and let some of that oil ooze out on you, my God, if you don't spend time with God, if you're not praying, if you're not God saying, God, change my will, change my appetite, my God, if you're not crying out to the Lord like that, you got to do it every single day. My God, it don't stop. Noah built for 120 years. Come on, somebody. You got to be that, my God. Oh, my God, you got to be that desperate. You can't just make a decision, my God, say, I'm going to break that, my God. If you don't keep that up under submission, that man or that woman will be right back in your bed. And if you're married, my God, there'd be four, five, six, seven, eight people sitting beside your husband in your mind. Mm. Number three, we must walk away. After we pray and we make a willful decision, I'm about to. We got to walk away. Oh, my God. You mean to tell me I got to leave him? Look at my babies. They taking notes. I love this. I heard God, Mother Margaret, I said, 13 and up, stay in the sanctuary. And I wish many more of us her. God, leave. Parents, bring your children to church. Yes, yes. Whoo, Jesus. Prayer. Submit my will. I love Pastor Tamir Bennett out of Sacramento, California. She used to, ooh, my God, you need to look her up. I'm going to have Kim send you her stuff. She, she, ooh, she's a prayer warrior. Crossed my mind over. Tamir Bennett, Sacramento, California. Tip Ministries. Hey, my God, she might be looking at me right now. She go hard in the paint. Y'all like her. I'm trying to get her to come down here. I've been working on her, my God. Ooh, she say, cross my mind over. Cross my heart over. It's me, Lord. It's me, Lord. Help me, Lord. She ain't talking about help that man and help me, Lord. Cross my mind over. Cross my will over. Change my appetites, Lord. It's me, Lord. It's me, Lord. You got to do like that. That's intercession. Oh, my God. That's intercession. You got to cry out for God to yourself. Cry out to God. Lord, help me, Lord. Save me. Cross me over. Change my mind. Change my heart. Submit my will. Break my will. Change my life, Lord, my God. Father God, forgive me for that thought that I had. Father God, help me stop doing that. Yeah. <sighs> Enemy's like, Because <sighs> see, remember, as I told y'all, I'm about to. Sin make you powerless. Yeah. Yeah. Habitual sin makes you a slave to that which you won't stop doing. And when you have sin, you have no power. Right. Power gives you strength also to it. Like I said, it's not involved, but it gives you strength to walk away. Sin will never keep you, will, 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 will tell you that you don't need to pray. Sin will tell you, my God, you okay. Sin will tell you that everything the pastor was saying, there's some truth to that, but, but, but you got your own belief system, so then you go to justifying and rationalizing, justifying being in a marriage, I mean being in a relationship that's unholy. Never put nobody before your soul, baby. Let me bring it on in. We got to walk away. If possible, we should talk. If possible, we should talk. If possible, we should talk with the other person involved. Talking about soul tie, I said if possible. If it's not healthy enough, don't do it. If it's dangerous, leave it alone. And get that proxy section joint going on. P12 leaders, please make, make, make room in your P12 meeting this week to have a proxy session. We should avoid blame. When you're going to try to break a soul tie, you should have blow up blame and take responsibility for your own part, for your part. And be honest as possible. Watch this. For your own spiritual growth and peace of mind, we should end the relationship immediately. Because it's that dangerous. 
2 Corinthians says this, and this is the message Bible, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. So leave the corruption and compromise. Corruption and compromise. Leave it for good, says God. Don't link up with those who will pollute you. I want you all for myself. God is saying this. I don't want to share you with a bunch of pollution, with a bunch of idols. I need you plural, singular. I don't need 18 people inside of you. I need one of you. One of you. One of you. Sounds like freedom, and we finna get free. According to verse 618 in this chapter, and I'm just going, you can just listen to this as I bring it in. There is a sense, there is a, there is a sense in which sexual sin destroys a person like no other. Because it is so intimate. Oh, my God. Because it is so intimate and entangling. Keep entangling because see if you struggle with porn and all of those type of stuff, see that's that's a that's a different type of entanglement. Because you can be struggling with that type of stuff, my God, and, and have somewhat on a minor scale, Pastor, an emotional tie. Never dealt with that junk either. You know, try giving God the glory. See you. I thank God. I always tell my wife I'm so grateful that there's a lot of stuff that my drug life kept me out of. My gang life kept me from getting entangled with a whole lot of stuff. I never got caught up in all that type of stuff. I was too busy gang banging, selling dope, and trying to get you before you get me. And so it kept me away from a whole lot of entanglements. So I didn't have to get free from a lot of stuff. I thank God when I was out there in the streets, I only got my two kids, my daughter and my son. I ain't got a bunch of kids all over America. A lot of people thought I had many kids. Did you how many kids you got, two? They go on. They go one of them right there. Ain't there looking? My mama talking about two. <laughs> <laughs> and so I give God the glory. I'm not trying to put nobody down, but see, I'm, this is the reason why when I begin to reflect, that's why you hear me say, oh, God, I thank you. That's what I mean. I just start giving God the glory because I'm so grateful for so many things. Like my daughter Patrice said, my God, Pastor, she said, I feel you now. She told me, I understand you now. She said, you're just so grateful. That's why you be acting the way you be acting, screaming the way you be screaming because you're grateful. I am, Pastor Ron. I'm grateful because it didn't have to turn out like this, man. I could still be in the penitentiary. I could have been dead a long time ago, man of God. God has kept me, my God. Ooh, my God, don't get me started. That's why I go hard like I do, woman of God, Linda. I love God. I've been delivered. You understand your pastor? Mm. Let me give you this. There is a sense in which sexual sin destroys a person like no other because it is so in intimate and entangling. Corrupting the deepest part of the human soul. Because it's intimacy. It's spending time talking and sharing your deepest thoughts and feelings and emotions with one another. It's a cold-blooded and sexual sin was running rapid through the, first, uh, through the church of Corinth. That's why Paul had to write this letter. Because Christians had formulated and stored, they had formulated their own doctrine, I'm going to say that. And they begin to tell themselves that it's okay. I'm free. I'm up on the grace. I can do what I want to do. And they found themselves getting entangled. What sin? Sexual sin. The coldest one of them all. 